Hello and welcome. I am Annette Reader from TheBiblicalNutritionist.com and today I'm pretty excited about this because today it's about how to celebrate Yom Kippur as a Christian. Why should we celebrate the Day of Atonement? Why should we celebrate Yom Kippur? Well, there is so much to learn from God's Word, and when we see it come to life through these feasts of our Lord, it's no wonder we should be asking ourselves, why haven't we been doing this all our life? Well, that's where I've come to understand that God's Word is written for us as believers. Old Covenant, New Covenant, it all comes together when you understand these feasts of our Lord. So I am so excited to share this with you today. But before we get started, please go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and the bell. I want to stay connected with you because as your personal biblical nutritionist, I want to teach you that just as we are physical, we are spiritual. And just as we are spiritual, we are physical. They go hand in hand. Although physical is here and the spiritual is all around it. That's what we teach in the inner circle. So it is always my joy to share with you God's recipe for excellent health. And yes, that includes celebrating the feast of our Lord. Yes, when the more we understand God's word and it comes alive within us, the more we want to do what Jesus did, eat what Jesus ate, live like Jesus lived, the more we understand what he wants to do in our life. This is an exciting time that we are in, and I am so glad to join you during this time. So let's look at this, how we can celebrate Yom Kippur. We just celebrated the Feast of Trumpets 10 days ago, and now it's time to celebrate or recognize the Day of Atonement, the most holy day according to the Jewish calendar. Now this is more of a solemn day as the high priest described in Leviticus 16, 23 and Numbers 29 would go into the Holy of Holies and he would present the offering for the people's sin for one year. And he would be in his full garment array, the gold bells on his robe alternating with the pomegranate balls. And remember, pomegranates are theme, they are a symbol of righteousness. And the gold was a symbol of purity. The street of heaven, remember, is pure gold, and you can just see your reflection. The high priest would sprinkle blood on the mercy seat as atonement for the sins of the people. And it was to be a day of great sorrow, godly repentance, and confession of sins. It was a time of mourning, kind of a self-introspection before God. It is the only day required of fasting that was set aside in the Bible. Now the Jewish people believed that the final judgment would come on the Day of Atonement. Now this is believed by believers to be the time of the tribulation period. Because of this belief, many Jewish people perform good deeds during the 10 days. They are called the 10 days of all, the days between atonement and the days of the Feast of the Tabernacles. Yet we as believers do not need to mourn as one without hope or one still looking for a savior. We have the savior, our great high priest, and he has already redeemed us for our sins. We have been forgiven. Remember in Hebrews, it says, without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Yet Jesus was that blood. He was that sacrifice once and for all. So you may, you may be asking, Annette, well then why should we celebrate this days as the Jewish people who do not see Jesus as their Messiah? Well, because this is another moment where God directed the people, foreigners and aliens, along with the Jewish people, to experience a Sabbath of rest. So here are the teachings that come from the Day of Atonement. So which in Hebrew is Yom Kippur. When we share these with our children and our grandchildren, it helps them to see again who Jesus is why he lived and why he died. Plus there's great prophecy in these feasts of our Lord. Our children, they need to understand this world that we live in is not our final home. Our Lord is coming back 
And these feasts, they help us to recognize the truth. They are a scarlet thread from the old covenant into the new covenant of who Jesus is and his plan for our life. Lessons to teach our families. Let's look at that. Number one, the two goats for sacrifice. Okay, one was for a service of God, Yahweh, and the second was for the scapegoat. I want you to read this story in Leviticus 16 with your family all together. The goat would be chosen as lots. And this is the perfect story to reenact with your family. Another second thing is the high priest had to sprinkle blood on the Ark of the Covenant for the sins of the people for one year. Remind our families, as it says in Hebrews 9, verses 11 through 14, where Jesus does this for us today. He entered once and for all into the holy place, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood. Thus, he secured our eternal redemption. Now look at number three. Review the verses about the veil and the temple being torn at the moment of crucifixion. Read about that in Matthew 27, 51. This shows us we no longer need a priest to atone for our sins. We have direct access to God on our own. And number four, Jesus came to give us a full forgiveness of sins. In John 10, 28, he says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Let's look at number five, future day of atonement. Now this is where it gets electrifying. Actually, in Zechariah chapter 12, it says, here is where our Lord will pour out a spirit of grace and supplication. Now, this is the day when God's chosen will see who he is. Chosen would be more the Jewish people. Yet always remember, Jesus fulfilled the spiritual aspects of that day of atonement when he went into the Holy of Holies with his own blood. The veil was torn. This is now no separation between God and us. And I've said this twice now because I really want you to get it. Jesus is our great high priest. The price was paid. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, our names are permanent in the book of life. Now, although we can still be in need of a cleansing, I'm going to admit I'm not perfect. And I would guess you're not either. So prophetically, the Day of Atonement points to the return of Jesus to judge the earth. This will fulfill the final great Day of Atonement. Now, just as Christmas and Easter, they're kind of the most popular Christian holidays. And yes, that's all I grew up celebrating. But now, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, well, they're the most celebrated Jewish holidays. Although I'm trying to creep into that area. Each year, Israeli airports and buses and television and radios, they're shut down in honor of Yom Kippur as people all over the world are celebrating the holiest day of the year for the Jewish people. Now, I was even intrigued that because everything is shut down, the highways are basically empty. There was one article about many bicyclists will take to the road and ride from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and back again. It's kind of a total of 80 miles. Sounds interesting to me. Now, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, they mark the high holy days or the days of awe. Now, we just learned in the previous video why Christians should celebrate the Feast of Trumpets. And I still have my shofar here. It is the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, which is the beginning of their new year. Now, it's also the announcement. If you rewatch that video, you know this answer. It's an announcement of something great is about to happen. Now, this begins the 10 days where the Jews forgive others. They give to those in need and they confess sins in order to secure their names in the book in the book of life for another year. Think about that. Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, they mark the high holy days, the days of awe. The days of awe end in a 25 hour fast and a Sabbath rest called Yom Kippur or day of atonement. So Yom Kippur represents the day that God provided atonement for the sins of the Israelites. So check that out in Leviticus 16. Now, again, to understand this more clearly, please read how God gave very clear directions concerning the Day of Atonement. Check that out in Leviticus 23. These are important words for us to understand because God sent Jesus to fulfill it. And then the Lord said to Moses, be careful to celebrate the Day of Atonement on the 10th day of that same month. So this is nine days after the Feast of Trumpets. Now you must observe it as an official day for Holy Assembly, a day to deny yourself and present special gifts to the Lord. Do no work during that entire day because it is a day of atonement. When offerings of purification are made for you, 
making you right with the Lord your God. And all who will not deny themselves, that day they will be cut off from God's people. And I will destroy anyone among you who does not work on that day. And I will destroy, and I will destroy anyone among you who does any work on that day. You must not do any work at all. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from the generations to generations, wherever you live. This will be a Sabbath day of complete rest for you, and on that day, you must deny yourselves. So this day of rest will begin at sundown on the ninth day of the month and extend until sundown on the tenth day. So that was God's words. So let's look at three ways that we can celebrate as Christians the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Number one, learn the terms. Start with the scapegoat. Read the story of the priest and how they chose the, the goat to carry away the sins of the people. And let your kids reenact this story. Now, if you don't have a goat, go visit a zoo, maybe a petting zoo, and then review the story while you're there. Bring lots with you in your pocket. And as a parent, and for the children to choose which goat gets which sentence. Check this out in Leviticus 16. So we, it's really good for our children to reenact this. Now the high priest is instructed on Yom Kippur to lay hands upon the goat while confessing the sins of the entire community. And then to throw the animal off a cliff. <laughs> okay, I don't know how you're gonna reenact that, but it's true that we need to really teach our children what God taught. It was serious, sin is serious. We may feel really sorry for the goat being thrown off a cliff, we may feel really sorry for lambs that are sacrificed, but sin is a serious issue. And we don't want to make light of it or say, well, that's not a loving God, because we need to teach our children this is what needed to be done, and this is what Jesus came to fulfill. That's the beautiful painting of this masterpiece, is Jesus came to fulfill this through grace and through his, his um, resurrection from the cross. If we don't give our children the full story, they're not going to understand how loving God is. We must teach them the entire story, the old covenant, and how it weaves straight into the new covenant. Now, a second term I want you to teach your children is Yom Tov. It's pronounced Yom Tov. <laughs> Some of you are saying that you got that totally wrong. It means good day. And it's kind of a generic term that you can use to refer to any of the Jewish holidays. So practice saying that with your family, Yom Tov. Now, the second thing I want you to do is learn to forgive. The Day of Atonement is about seeking forgiveness. Well, we too can use these days as a time of seeking forgiveness from those who have not acted Christ-like towards us and also to those we maybe didn't act Christ-like towards. But we also need to learn how to forgive ourselves. In the Inner Circle Coaching Group, it is more often than not that a person needs to see themselves as forgiven before they can move forward with a complete understanding of how deep God's love is for them. We hold our problems as bricks and they, and they block us from seeing God at work. It is time to let go of our shortcomings and time to see what God is doing. Remember, exceedingly abundantly in our lives. And anytime we say, yes, but I have this issue and that issue. Okay, stop it. That's just pride. And we need to just stop saying that. I want you to just pause and catch yourself and pray for forgiveness and then forgive yourself and stand up and acknowledge that's not me anymore. I am loved. I am forgiven and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So the first two are learn the terms and then forgive. The third step is to fast. Every day is a great day to fast. We fast from any obstacle that is inhibiting us from the sweetest fellowship ever between us and God. The problem with our lives today is that we enjoy God's blessings so much that they interfere with seeing God himself. Food, talents, friends, careers, nature, all great blessings. And everyone can be a hindrance between a good relationship with God and a great relationship with God. Thank you, Lord, for all these blessings. Okay, that's about me. Thank you, Lord, because you are the one who blesses. So have you considered fasting? And all family members that are five years and up can fast. Women who are pregnant or breastfeeding are not supposed to fast. So even if it is just one meal, fasting can also be from, from our go-tos, TV, internet, books, phones, tablets, anything. Fasting from these items can draw us closer to God. 
So consider how your family can fast together because fasting is totally a part of Yom Kippur. As Christ followers, we aren't called to walk in guilt. Christ entered the most holy place on our behalf and he washed us clean from our sins. Never forget Hebrews chapter 9. It reminds us that if that animal blood and the other rituals of purification were effective in cleaning up certain matters of our religion and behavior, think how much more the blood of Christ cleans up our whole life inside and out. So choose what will you fast from? It can be anything, and I want you to do this as a united family or as a corporate fast. And then when you end your fast, Go in and read Psalm 107, 8 through 9. It says this, Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. All right, number four, fellowship. A day of atonement leads right into the Feast of Tabernacles, which is our next video. So make sure you're watching that. This is why it is great to understand that the Day of Atonement was always meant to be a symbol pointing to something to come, something much greater. The promise of Christ as the ultimate once and for all sacrifice, the scapegoat for our sins. And so gather with friends and family and celebrate the assurance that we have in Christ. Use this time to teach the children the reminder of how Jesus came to be our high priest. And never forget, the greatest story ever told is the story of the temple, the high priest, the lamb, the promises kept for us today. Remember God's story from Genesis to Revelation is about his promises, his provisions, and his grace. Today, we get to celebrate that story. I look forward to reading your comments, how you're celebrating the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, or all of the days that fit within it. I look forward to reading your comments. Is this the first time for you to do this? Now, I know I've not given you any food ideas or any more activities other than reenactment. Reenactment tells the brain and the heart together what's important in a child's life. The more we solidify those beliefs, the stronger our children will be in understanding that what's happening around us is not as important as what's happening within us. And God knows what's going on around us and he will never leave us or forsake us. That's a promise. He's all about promises, provisions, and grace. And never forget the grace, amazing grace. So thank you for letting me share this with you. I, I know we're stepping outside of food for a little bit, but these feasts of our Lord are so important. Never forget, God loves you. That is why this scarlet thread from Genesis to Revelation is so important to understand. So I love you too, and I'm glad to be a part of your family. And thank you for joining us at the Biblical Family of the Biblical Nutritionist Family. And if you haven't already, check out our Academy, Biblical Nutrition Academy, where we teach God's recipe for excellent health. And there's a prayer course on there that is so phenomenal. She's my prayer mentor that I have used for years, and I wanted her to teach you. So be sure and check that out as well. Till next time, thanks for watching, and remember, God loves you.